Welcome back. Video gaming is a huge business. Recently, market research firm Newzoo estimated the global gaming business is worth about $135 billion and rising. And with me is someone who is kind of right in the middle of all this growth in crypto and blockchain and everything. So I'm really looking forward to talking to you, uh, Edith Young, uh, Managing uh, Director of Proof of Capital and also an advisor at Cocos, a Chinese video gaming, blockchain-based gaming company. So, That's right. Okay. So let's start with let's start with Cocos and then kind of take a broader view of how what all is going on in terms of crypto and blockchain. Tell me about Cocos. Uh, so Cocos is actually a, a brand new uh, blockchain develop, development platform uh, for game developers. And Cocos 2DX is actually quite a popular gaming engine that's been around for the last 15, 20 years with over a million uh, gaming developers already built on it. So you probably heard of some of the games yes. that have been on it. Yes, so, tell me so people um, know these. Like yeah. Angry Birds, oh, yeah. uh, Clash of Clans. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this particular Google's uh, gaming engine's been around for a long time. So now, like the, the brand new, like Goku's BDX uh, gaming platform, the whole idea is sort of bring out the, the best essence of blockchain, mm -hmm. but apply for game developers to help them to increase engagement mm -hmm. um, and also potentially increase uh, average revenue, like ARPU for mm -hmm. revenue. So uh, how do you do this? Let, let's say if you are a game developer from Angry Bird, right? So you develop Angry Birds goes to Rio, and, and there could be another theme goes to Tokyo. And you know, if you are gamers and you buy a lot of virtual goods and tokens and uh, go to Rio, you, after three to six months, you're sort of tired of this particular game. Whatever that you own in the token, you can't really reuse, you reuse it anywhere else. And that's what the be beauty of Cocos is about, where um, the blockchain infrastructure let the gamer be able to sort of deposit their, their token in their own wallet. I see. And for the next game, you can use the same token or virtual goods in other okay. games provided by the same developers. Okay. Um, so that's a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you know, other great um, blockchain protocol, a lot of times it's a brand new programming language. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite hard. Um, Game developers, at the end of the day, just want to focus on making money, mm -hmm. not learning another language. So in this case, Cocos um, allow game developers to use Luau or sort of you know, languages they already understand, but be able to build up you know, like gaming on, on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So that's what Cocos does, provides them kind of that platform they can just build on top of it. That's correct. The game. So, okay. And how do you see the future of gaming? I, I have a, a 10 and an 11-year-old. So mm -hmm. I know this is, is huge. Uh, they're doing Minecraft and Roblox blocks and Fortnite and I know this is something that they all grow up with they all enjoy Do yep. it's, it's already a huge industry yeah I, I actually think that uh, of course Jane I'm sure that you worry about you know, 11 <laughs> and 12 years old yes. spending way too much time on <laughs> on games but at the same time I do think you know like games like Roblox right mm -hmm. they are in some ways it's so great like for teenager to train their mind mm -hmm. and a lot of these conversation and learning it is actually through gaming um, but I think like the couple big trend that's happening like with with gaming is, you know, f first and foremost, uh, Roblox is actually going to China. Okay. Uh -huh. And I think worldwide, if uh -huh. you look in on at like the overall gaming industry, um, revenue for the first time, I think 2017, uh, China actually exceed the U.S. in terms of uh, like gross revenue for iOS, uh, and very, I'm very sure for Android as well. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot of really interesting sort of cross-border opportunities that you see like Fortnite uh, or PUBG or now even Roblox yeah. going to Asia. Mm -hmm. But a lot of really great game developers are still coming from the U.S. Yeah, no, very interesting. And you, you brought up China. So what is kind of the sentiment in China about blockchain, crypto, what's going on there? Because there's like mixed messages, it feels like. Yeah, it's, I think China has a love-hate relationship with crypto and blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, in 2017, September 4th, I remember that day very particularly, because Chinese government basically announced no more, you cannot use RMB to purchase Bitcoin, and it's illegal. So on that day, Bitcoin price dropped yeah. a bit. Uh, one week later, they basically declared no more ICO um, mm -hmm. because there was just not enough education for the population. Okay. And was that to protect investors or why would they make that? 
well, decision? I, no, I think two years ago there was a lot of people have no can't even spell blockchain That's or right. Bitcoin. Yeah, in 2017 was yeah. kind of a wild west. I'm um, getting uh -huh. into all these ICO that yeah. really, honestly, I thought at the time it was only 90 percent of them mm -hmm. are all scam. Right. Uh, so it's really about protecting the citizen. Okay. But what's interesting is that. Um, Earlier this year, the Chinese government actually gave out 196 licenses for specific companies to work on blockchain projects. Okay. So blockchain is definitely great, mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin, not so much. Okay. Well, so I had a conversation with somebody uh, just a few days ago about, um, and we can talk about this in a minute, but we were particularly talking about Facebook and crypto and how Congress mm -hmm. is investigating this. And he was making the point that governments don't like this because they lose power over the people that's right. if they don't have their currency. That's right. And so um, I thought that, do you think that's going, I, I think there's some of that in the U.S. Do you think that's happening in China as well? Um, Jane, I'm so glad you bring it up. I think for China for sure, because mm -hmm. Chinese government is all, all about control of currency. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know, not ha giving them the power to control was a big no-no for them. And that's why Bitcoin is banned in China. Thank you so much, Edith. Fascinating topic. So yep. thank you for coming in. And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.